LaSalle, hero, leader, madman. Some loved him, some wanted him dead. But who was this guy? Why was he such a big deal? Well, Robert de LaSalle, born in Normandy, France, was the first known man to sail on the Great Lakes in a full-size boat. He was also a man of passion and motivation and rash decisions, like becoming a Jesuit priest for nine years. Our story begins right after that. LaSalle is sick of the church and wants to explore the new world, so he hops on a boat across the Atlantic and makes his way to the Great Lakes. Life in the new world isn't easy, between pirates, mosquitoes, and the unknown. But LaSalle maps out Lake Ontario and Lake Erie in his first trip, and he still wants to do more exploring. But before he can, one of his fed-up servants poisons him, making LaSalle sick for two months. This doesn't stop him. Nothing could. He lets his servant live and hops on a boat back to France to speak with King Louis XIV. He needs more cash, more boats, more men to claim the land for France and expand its empire. LaSalle sails back to the New World with his friend Henri de Tonti, a crew of 32 men, and the King's Blessing. This is where our story gets really crazy. LaSalle, Tonti, and their men build the Griffin in the New World. The ship becomes more and more priceless to LaSalle as he spends more time on it. The Griffin set sail on Lake Erie, Lake Huron, and Lake Michigan in waters only canoes had seen before. One fateful day, realizing he needs more money, and quick, LaSalle sends the Griffin and six men off to sell furs in Niagara. What he doesn't realize is that he would never see his beloved ship again. After he realizes his ship is lost, LaSalle is devastated. But his strength and determination keep him going. Unfortunately, his crew is not as strong-willed, and they stage several mutinies against their leader, all of which LaSalle snuffs out. LaSalle pushes on, taking the rest of his men down the Mississippi River to set up a base, naming the territory Louisiana to honor his beloved king. But all that glitters is not gold, as LaSalle tragically loses several men and ships on this trip. After reaching the end of the river, he returns to France once again for more resources. The king happily provides LaSalle with four ships and hundreds of engineers, soldiers, and families to colonize the Louisiana Territory. But this was only half of what LaSalle wanted. If you've been listening to this story, it shouldn't be a surprise that his next mission is filled with massive amounts of loss and death. LaSalle and his followers sail across the Atlantic Ocean toward the mouth of the Mississippi, but at a great cost losing ship after ship to pirates in the weather. LaSalle's crew reaches a boiling point, deciding enough is enough. They stage yet another mutiny and lure LaSalle away from his camp. Two men fire their guns. The first misses LaSalle, but the second hits him in the head. LaSalle is dead. Poison, pirates, storms, none of these factors could stop LaSalle. It turns out, the only thing that stopped LaSalle was the men that he trusted.